Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. Walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. Walking with the King, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King, every day I'm walking with the King, oh hallelujah, I'm walking with the King, praise his holy name, walking with the King, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King, every day. I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah. I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. Walking with the King. Hallelujah. I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah. I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name, walking with the king, hallelujah, I'm walking with the king, every day I'm walking with the king. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Sister Riley. God bless you, Elder and Mother Bailey. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you both. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. Good morning, Miriam. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Cynthia. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Stimson. God bless you and Deacon Stimson. Good morning, Deacon Grant. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Diaz. Good morning, Mother Morris. God bless you, Minister Morris and the family. We hold you all in prayer. God bless you, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Sister Jones. God bless you, Elder and Sister Adams. Good morning, Mother Davis. God bless you and Deacon Davis. Good morning, Missionary Domingo. God bless you. Good morning, Elder Smith. God bless you, sir. Good morning to you and Sister Smith. Good morning, Sister Sarah. Good morning, Sister Edmund. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Sister Mary. God bless you, Marion. Good morning, Sister Gwen. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Brandy. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon. And Mother Wilson, God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Walker. God bless you. Good morning, Katrina. Good morning, Sister Coburn. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Briggs. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Malloy. Good morning, Missionary Domingo. Praise the Lord to you. Good morning, Caprice. Good morning, Sister Saunders. Good morning, Sister Howard. God bless you, Sister Malloy. Praise the Lord, Sister Roberts. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Clory. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Dykes. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Mother Holman. Good morning, Sister Kenlock. Good morning, Francine. God bless you. Good morning, Kimberly. It was great seeing you yesterday. God bless you. And Deacon Clark, good morning. God bless you, Sister Mamie. Good morning, Elder Mott. God bless you and Missionary Mott. Good morning, Sister Janice. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Bennett. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Street. God bless you. Good morning, Carmelita. Good morning, Sister Sylvia Green. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Sessions. Good morning, Sister Stewart. Good morning, Mother Fears. God bless you. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer for more things have been brought by prayer than the world will ever know and we continue to witness and see the manifestation of God through prayer early this morning I was receiving praise reports of what God is doing God making provision God opening doors God just doing what God does when the people of God pray whenever we pray we invoke the power and the presence of God into our lives into our situations and we see God move and we see God bless and we see God 
open doors, make ways, heal bodies, save souls. All of this coming to us through prayer. And yes, my friend, prayer works. It works. It works. Whatever your need is, whatever your situation, whatever your condition, prayer works works. And so as always, we are asking you, if you're on Facebook, to please share your prayer requests. You can place it right in the chat, or you can inbox Reginald Davis, or you can inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can add your prayer requests right to the chat there, or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody who's on the conference call, and I thank God for our faithful conference call listeners, Appreciate them so very much. And so if you're listening by conference call or if you're watching by YouTube or anybody can use the text line, which is 336-567-5358. Again, that number to text your prayer request, 336-567-5358. Text them. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're adding them to the prayer book. And more importantly, we are praying to God with you. You, believing God with you, joining our faith to your faith that God will indeed do what we know he is able, he is able to do. I want us to continue in the opening of the book of Revelation. So you'll find us once again in Revelation chapter one. I want us to read um, verses four through six. Revelation chapter one, verses four through six. Six. The Bible says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and have made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Um. I want to continue in this opening of Revelation, and I want to use for our thought today, Jesus has something to say. Jesus has something to say. The John was the recorder. He was the scribe, as it were to whom the Lord revealed the end times and what would come to pass in the book of Revelation. John was exiled. John was living on this vicious isle of Patmos. John was separated from his friends, from his family. And John is an old man. He's not a young man by this time. He's an old man. And this old man is literally living on this isle, separated from people, living in exile. But he was sent there by God. The Lord would not allow John to die. They tried to um, execute John. They tried to kill John. They tried to boil John in oil. And somehow he survived. He survived this horrible, horrible um, death. He survived it. And yet here is John writing. He is the writer of this particular text. He's the writer of this book. And as John is writing, um, he is speaking on behalf of Jesus Christ. This is not John making up something. This is not John constructing his own thought or sharing his own vision, but this is John writing as the spirit has moved upon him. The audience for Revelation, the initial audience, was the seven churches in Asia. And Asia was, um, in this particular time, Asia Minor. These were the churches that were in what would best be known as modern Turkey. 
Um, they called it Asia. It was actually around in and around the nation of Turkey. And we're going to talk about the churches specifically as we go further in this study. But he mentions them by name, seven churches which are in Asia. And it's a letter. It's a letter based upon the revelation that John received. And he opens the letter with the salutation, grace be unto you and peace. Hallelujah. This is an act of grace. Everything that the Lord is saying is him acting in grace, unmerited favor towards us. The, the, the warnings, the information, what is shared in Revelation is given to us as an act of grace. God always acts in grace towards his people. Yes, God judges sin. Yes, God judges iniquity. But God moves in unmerited favor. And his favor towards the church is to give them this information. It's an act of favor. It's an act of him sharing his information. Grace and peace. Hallelujah. The two, one of the two greatest things that the Lord gives us is what? Grace and peace. He gives us grace, unmerited favor. He gives us peace with him so that we are able able to function. There's not enmity between us and God because here is God giving grace and here is God giving peace to the church. And, and, and where is this coming from? It's coming from the eternal God, which is, which was, and which is to come. This is important. God is eternal. God is eternal. And Jesus Christ is one with God from the beginning. From everlasting to everlasting, Jesus Christ is not an afterthought of God. Jesus Christ in the spiritual does not have a birth date. Yes, he was born in the natural, but Jesus Christ has been one with the Father from the very beginning. So he is the one which is. He is self-existent. You can couple this with what God said to Moses on Mount Sinai when he said, I am that I am the self-existent God, the God who has always been. He didn't just show up. He didn't just reveal himself, but he has always been God. He was that means he existed before we existed, before there was time, before there was a when or a where. He was the existent eternal God and which is to come. There will always be God long after this world has been destroyed, long after this world has been changed to the new heaven and the new earth. Guess what? There will be God. Thank you, Sister Felix. He is Alpha, the beginning, the first letter of the alphabet, and he is Omega. Omega, the last letter of the alphabet. That means he's A to Z and everything in between. That is the God that we serve. So this is Jesus Christ and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Now, this is a reference to what Isaiah called the seven spirits of God that you will find in um, the book of Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 12, Isaiah talks about the seven spirits of God. And that is the total sum of God's ministry, his knowledge and his attributes. And he mentions them. And I'm going to just mention them to you now. It is the spirit of the Lord, which is the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. There is a completion relative to God. That's why the number seven is used because seven is God's number of completion. He is a complete God. He is a total God. And so he, he, he simply is giving a salutation. Once again, revelation is unveiling. So this is Jesus Christ unveiling himself as the head of the church, as the God of glory, as the one who speaks and shares his information with the church. So this whole notion is who God is. Who is Jesus? Those seven spirits. Once again, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. There is a completion in this element. That's why seven is given. There's no other God coming because Jesus Christ is the complete 
God. There's, there was no God before him. There will be no God after him. He is the complete God, the total package. Why are you looking for another God when he is the total package? Yes, Jesus Christ has something to say. He is, hallelujah, which was, which is, which will come. He is the completion, seven spirits of God before his throne, verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the faithful witness. In other words, everything Jesus says is true. Everything Jesus says is true. There is no checking up on Jesus to see if what he said was true. Everything he says is true. He is the faithful witness. If he speaks, he speaks because he is faithful. He is faithful. That means you can count on what he says. You can count on what he says. You can stand on what he says because he's the faithful witness. He's not going to lie on you. He's not going to lie to you. He is the faithful witness of God. He is faithful to say who God is, to reveal God to us. He is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Jesus Christ is the first fruit of him who slept. That's who Paul called him, meaning that when he died, he rose again, and he is the evidence that there will be a resurrection of the dead. Jesus Christ being the first, he was dead, and he was raised by the power of the Holy Spirit. We know the story that he died. They took his body to the tomb, buried him. His spirit went into hell, preached to the spirits that were in hell. And on the third day, hallelujah, the Bible says the graves flew open and they waited for the resurrection. And when Jesus got up, they got up. When Jesus rose, they rose because he is the first fruit of them that slept. The, he, is, he is the beginning of what we call the first resurrection, the first resurrection. And you want to be a part of the first resurrection because because the second death has no power. There's no redeeming. The only reason why those people are going to get up on judgment day is to receive the final judgment from God, the final judgment from God. But the first resurrection where the raptured saints are going to be raised from the dead, changed from mortal to immortality, from corruptible to incorruptible. We are a part, those of us who are saved, if we die in the Lord, we are a part of the first resurrection and Jesus Christ is the first begotten, the first fruit of the first resurrection. He's the first one that got up. Oshanama. He's the first one that got up. And because he got up, if you or I die, if we go to the grave, we're going to get up because Jesus got up. What what did he say? I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Oh, hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ is the embodiment, the living resurrection. If you die in Christ, you die in the resurrection so that when the first trumpet sounds, oh my God, you're going to get up. You're going to be translated from mortal to immortality, from corruptible to incorruption. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the first begotten of the dead. He is the prince of the kings of the earth. In other words, he's the king of kings. Kings, unto him that loved us. This is the this, this is what Jesus Christ is saying. He's loved us from the very beginning. He didn't wait for us to get saved for him to love us, but before your mother knew your father, he loved you. How do you know that? Because he died for your sins. He offered himself for your transgressions, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his strength stripes, we are healed. He loved us. What sent him to the cross was his love. What sent him to the grave was his love. What sent him to, to, to hell was his love. He loved us. The Lord has always, always loved you. The Lord has always loved me. We need to wrap our heads around that reality that no matter what else has happened in our lives, you have the assurance that Jesus Christ loves you. For God so loved the world that he did what? 
gave his only begotten son, that whoso believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm so grateful that the Lord loved me. God, that Jesus loves me. He loves me. He has something to say to us. He has something he's trying to share with us. He has something he's trying to reveal to us. He loved us and he washed, look at this, us from our sins in his own blood. Oh God, it wasn't the blood of the bullock or the goat or the lamb or the turtle dove or the pigeon that saved us. It was the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifices of the Old Testament. The sacrifices of Israel were insufficient for the saving of humanity. All the sacrifices could do, all they could do was cover sin. I've used this analogy before. It's just like you paying the minimum payment on your credit card. You've got a $300 debt on your credit card, and they say the minimum payment is $10, $12, $15. You try to pay that minimum payment every month, you're going to be paying that $300 dollars off for the rest of your life because it was never designed to take away the debt just to appease the debt the same way that blood of the animal just appeased the debt of sin but it couldn't take away the sin it had to be the blood of somebody who was sinless it had to be the blood of somebody that had no sin of his own to die for so he was able to die for us that's Jesus John said behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The Lamb of God, the the the, the blemish free lamb, the lamb without spot, the lamb without any sin. He was able to die for us. Oh, my time is up. I'm, I got to come back to this tomorrow. But Jesus Christ has something that he is trying to say. He's trying to say, number one, he's speaking to the church. He's speaking to the church. And even now he's speaking to the church. He's trying to tell us that he is the eternal God. He is the eternal God, which is, which was, which is to come. He is the complete God, the seven spirits of God that are before the throne. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our faithful witness, the resurrection and the life. He is the God that loves us and the God that washed us from our sins. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. I need you to come on back tomorrow because God, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes, we're going to talk about the end times. We're going to talk about the seven churches, but Jesus Christ above everything else wants the church to know who he is is. He wants the church to know who he is and what he came to do in the life of every single believer. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we love you. We honor you. We adore you. For your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness. Jesus, I thank you for waking us up this morning. Oh, Shanama, I thank you for life. I thank you for health and strength. I thank you for being able to get out of the bed, to move around, to get prepared, to, Lord, join this great cadre of believers, Lord, from all over the world. All over the world, God, you've brought us together together once again and we start the day thanking you for goodness and mercy and grace and love and kindness thank you jesus ah, hallelujah thank you jesus for another day and lord as we come we come asking you to join your presence in this virtual prayer room, whether we've come by Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or conference call, Lord, be in our midst right now so that we will know that we are in the presence of the living God. I 
thank you. Hey, Shandolo Mosia Tanaye. I thank you for your presence now. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your power that is being revealed at this moment. And I'm asking you to bless everybody in this prayer room and bless everybody that's on the prayer list, whether they've been sent by text or messenger or email. God, I want you to honor every request, God, every request that has come forth because somebody needs a blessing. We're praying, my God, for Michael. We're praying for the Taylor grandchildren and the Taylor children. We're praying for Deshaun, for Raquel. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple of New York City. We lift up Bishop and Mother Wright. We lift up Bishop and Sister Wilkins today. We pray for Maya. We pray for Malcolm. We pray for Tiffany, for Jalen, for Bryson, for Marvin Jr. We pray for John, for Mercedes. God, we pray for all of our seniors. My God, everywhere. God, cover them, protect them, keep them, sustain them. Lord, make a way for them to meet their needs, God, every day. We're praying, oh God, for Cheyenne Williams. We're praying for the homeless this morning, people that don't have anywhere to go. My God, that you would open a door and provide shelter and meet their needs. We're praying for those who are mentally, oh God, unstable, suffering, my God, from schizophrenia, suffering from paranoia, all kinds of mental deficiencies, God, that you would touch them in the name of Jesus, that you would heal them. Oh God, that you would bless them. We're praying for Elder Hilton and his family. We're praying for Yolanda. We're praying for Micaiah. We're praying for Elijah. We're praying for the Dalberry family. God, we're praying for those who are addicted, oh God, to anything, drugs, alcohol, sex, perversion. God, deliver in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for the unsaved this morning, people who are outside of the ark of safety, who don't know you, who have not been delivered out of their sins. God, destroy the yoke that is binding them. Destroy whatever that is holding them. And God, God, deliver them in the name of Jesus. Oh, Wash them in your precious blood. Let them be born of the water, of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, save to the utmost. Our friends, our family, our children, our sons, our daughters. God, save. God, I'm praying for backsliders everywhere. My God. God, that you would redeem and reclaim them. Those that have drifted, those that have strayed, those that have walked away. God, reach them where they are. Find them, bring them back. My God, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for the discouraged this morning. People who have just been through so much that they just don't feel like going on. God, I want you to meet them where they are and I want you to deliver them in the name of Jesus. Every name on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every Every son and daughter, my God, deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying today for healing for the sick, Lord. My God, so many people everywhere are suffering in their bodies, but we're praying for them today. We're praying for Zatavia. We're praying for missionary Huntley's brother. We're praying for Jerrica Rich, for Ed, for Doris Merritt. We're praying for Miracle Destiny, for Alexis Smith, for Lamont Edwards, for Margaret Speller. We're lifting up Deacon James Grant. We're praying my God, for Mother Barbara Davis this morning. We're praying for Julia Peacock, for Aaron, for Seymour and Doris Staten, for Aunt Ida, for Aunt Irma. We're praying for Mother Cheryl Barnwell today that you would touch and heal. We're lifting up Mark Norwood. We're praying, oh God, for Mary Miles. We're praying for Stephen Cathel. We're praying for Regina Brockett, for Jason Brockett, for Miriam Hamilton. We're praying for Jaleesa this morning. We're praying for Deacon Adams today. We're praying for Elder Tull. We're praying for Deacon Deacon Wilson, Deacon Harrison today. God, we're lifting up the sick everywhere. We're praying for Mary this morning that you would touch her leg. We're praying for Vicki. We're praying for Melissa Pierce, for Jackie Pierce. We're lifting up Apostle Moultrie this morning. We're praying for Mother Moultrie. We're lifting up Bishop Solomon's granddaughter. My God, everybody everywhere that needs the healing touch, stretch out your hand in the name of Jesus and touch and heal. Remember Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, in the name of Jesus, remember them in a special way. Remember, my God, Mother 
Carol Coleman, Sister Shakaya Polk. We're praying today for Bishop Mac Vincent, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Apostle Leroy Joseph. We're praying today for Apostle Charles Williams. God, touch and heal wherever the needs are. We lift up Brother Wiggins today. We pray for Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. We're praying today for Dr. Hayward. We're praying, oh God, for Sister Hayward. We're praying for Dr. Hayward's mother, for Mother Pride, for Mother Jill. We're praying today that you would touch in the name of Jesus. God, everybody that's sick everywhere, God, stretch out your healing hand in the name of Jesus to Mother Chambers, Mother Moorhead, Mother Carter today, praying today for Lady Staten. God, we lift up the sick everywhere and the recovering everywhere. Remember Pastor Carr, Minister Carr, in the name of Jesus. Remember, my God, Elder Tyson and Elder Smith today. Lord, remember Mother Foster, Henry J., and Brother Cliff. Lord, send your healing virtue. God, remember Mother Tanaj, Mother Home, and Missionary Simmons today. God, remember them and touch their bodies. Remember Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. Lord, we pray for Marlette this morning, for Maurice today, for Dennis, for Tony. We pray for Kimberly, God. We pray, my God, for Chris, everybody that's sick everywhere, anybody watching, Lord, God, that has a sickness in their body, touch them. Remember Missionary Domingo. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston today. Remember Bishop D. God with your healing touch in the name of Jesus. We're praying, God, for healing on every side. Remember everybody in the hospitals, the rehab centers, the nursing homes. Remember those in hospice. Remember those in the cancer ward, the COVID ward, the ICU unit, the dialysis unit, and God bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm praying today for grieving people everywhere, everywhere, God. Somebody is facing and dealing with death, but I'm praying for your grace to be with them. Remember Darren Wiggins. Remember Mary White. Remember Trinity today. Remember Chris. Remember Mary's husband, God. Remember Chanel Jackson today. Remember, my God, the Evans family. God, people everywhere that are grieving, God, hold them up. Remember Lady Andrea Maxwell and the Maxwell family. Remember Dr. Phyllis Carter and the Carter family. Remember Bishop Michael Fields Shekinah and the Fields Green family. God, remember my God, Mother Ida Harrell and the Harrell family. Remember Mother, hallelujah, Jacqueline Grant and the Grant family. Remember the Groovers this morning in your precious name. Remember my God, the Morris, oh God, and the Carney families. God, remember them in a special way. Remember my God, the Kramers. Remember the Hargroves, the Blunt family. People everywhere grieving, but God be with them today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm praying today that you would remember, my God, hallelujah, everybody everywhere that's grieving. Remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Remember the Meadows family. Remember the Moyers today. God, remember the Perkins family. God, we lift up the Dockery family. I pray for Sister Pam in the name of Jesus, and I pray for her mother and her sisters today. I pray for the White family. I pray, my God, that you remember all of these grieving people everywhere. God, comfort them and sustain them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're praying today that you remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean, Melvin and Street families. Lord, remember the Smith family. Remember Takesha Hill and her family, God. Remember, my God, in your precious name, hallelujah, the Ransom family. Remember, in your name, God, strengthen, oh God, on every side, Brenda and the Allen McNeely family. We pray for the Jackson family, the Newkirk family, the Ned family. God, give grace and touch. We pray for Brenda and the Allen McNeely family. We pray, God, that you will remember, hallelujah, Shauna Monique and the Gary Porter family, Trell and Ryan, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, and the Williams Allen family. We pray for Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family today. God, give grace and strength to grieving people everywhere. We pray, my God, for the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeze, the Washington Fields family. We pray for the Winninghams. We pray for the Bankses, for the Middletons, for the Taylors this morning. We pray that you remember, my God, the Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrams, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, God, the Briggs family, the Phillips family, God, the Taylor family. God, comfort them. We pray for the Davises this morning, the Allens. Hallelujah. We pray, my God, for the Caldwells, the Hayses, the Moors. We pray for the Harbisons, the Austins, the Adams family. Every
every grieving widow, widower, child, parent, sibling. God, we're praying for grace today. I'm praying for the body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastor's children today. I'm praying today that you remember mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, all of the young people in the church, God, strengthen the young people, help the young people today in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying today that you would remember, oh God, remember musicians, singers, and psalmists, the entire body of Christ today. Help us to hear from you. Help us to know you. Help us to understand you. Help us to have the full revelation of who you are. God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to strengthen the church, God. Help the church today. I pray today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I pray for school employees and students everywhere. I pray for everybody that works to help another person, people in private care, giving those who work in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, clinics, banks, stores, drive trucks, whatever they do, God, protect them and cover them as these diseases continue, oh God, to haunt the landscape. I'm praying for your blood to cover. I'm praying for your blood to protect. I'm praying, praying, my God, that you would keep us safe and Lord, that you would heal everybody everywhere that is sick. And Lord, as you're healing disease, as you're recovering souls from surgery, God, heal this land, heal this land from sin, heal this land from jealousy, from hatred, from violence, heal this land today, my God. God, oh, from perversion, heal the land from injustice, from sexism, from racism, and let the church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Lord, we need to hear from you, and we need to know your will and your word. So guide us and keep us, Lord. Let us down in the depths of your word, the understanding of your precepts, that we might honor and live for you. Bless us today, God. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, join me in giving God praise right now. Everybody on this line, let's give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Lord, I need to hear your voice. Lord, I need to hear your voice. Jesus declared, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. In other words, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. And because they know the voice of the shepherd, they respond to the shepherd. Hallelujah. They hear the shepherd. They respond to the shepherd. They obey the shepherd and they follow the shepherd because they know the shepherd's voice. They know the shepherd's voice. And we need to know the voice of Jesus Christ so that as he is speaking to the church, we can respond, we can follow, and we can live by the word of the living God. Lord, I need to hear your voice. Hallelujah. I need the comfort of your voice. I need the strength of your voice. I need to hear your voice. God bless you this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a good start. Look, you can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. You can also stay connected through our our conference call. Thank God for our conference call listeners. Keep coming, keep sharing the number, and keep being a part of morning prayer each morning. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available seven days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every morning, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every morning at 8.30 on GregoryGospel.com. 
Com. Let me thank everybody that seeds and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts are so important because they help us to do the things that we need to do. And if you desire to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online. Our website is www.refugetemple in as in north c as in carolina.com refuge temple nc.com is our website and you can give on the donate page you if you have the givelify app you can share via givelify just search for refuge temple burlington you'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there or if you have cash app our cash app is dollar sign the number one refuge dollar sign one refuge is our cash app and you can make your gift there and we thank you for your giving but we thank you most of all for being a part of this prayer and how god is blessing each day every day every day i hear testimonies after testimonies of people whose lives are being positively impacted because we gather for prayer each morning so keep gathering, keep coming in, keep inviting others, keep sharing the prayers with those that you know and love, keep sharing it with others so that we can stay connected through prayer and keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Just hold us up in prayer. Keep praying for Refuge Temple that God will continue to bless us and keep praying one for another. That that his grace will be applied to each of us that we might walk in his will. The Lord bless you with a complete knowledge and understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord strengthen you to hear his voice in your daily life. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom. Shalom.